promise that I own other coffee mugs in my life. I, I feel like, I don't know if you guys don't believe me or something, because, like, Dimitri was like, Tracy, every single time, like, I see your picture, like, your little, like, why can't I think of the word right now? It's like the little thing, like the little YouTube picture and you click on it and like that's the video, like whatever, I, the name, I can't think of what it is right now. Um, but Dimitri's like, Tracy, you have like the same one every time I was like, I own other mugs. I'm using another mug right now for my tea. I don't drink coffee. But like that beverage, is that cup that I have is mine. Like these are like my parents, like that, that's my cup. It says warning this beverage contains people. It's a Hannibal reference and that show is great. Mads Mikkelsen, Hugh Dancy. The first season was awesome, the second season was okay, the third season was uh, and then it got cancelled. If, if they stayed up to like the greatness of the first season and it just it just went very much downhill and you know. That show's great though. Let me tell let me know if you've seen it because it's it's so good. So good. Um Okay, so I'm also looking like super classy and professional right now. Um, I got done with my first day of student teaching and I'm really excited if you guys don't know I'm an English education major and we like had our conferences and stuff today and like, you know, I'm just like super excited. So let's talk about magic cards. Let's talk about modern. I wanted to film this video for a while and I don't really know like why I haven't. I just it was kind of like a video that I was like, yeah, I'll film and then I just didn't. Um, so I've had this idea for a while and it's basically like, talking about like the transition from like playing, being like a casual player and then getting into like competitive modern. I don't know too much about other like other formats like, but I, I feel like a lot of these ideas would like still apply if you like are getting into standard or legacy or something. Um, and so like, these aren't like rules, but these are just things that I feel like were really kind of helpful. The first thing I would say is, you know, I think it's best to kind of build a sort of like established deck. And I've done a lot, a lot of videos where I talk about net decking and I talk about homebrews and things like that. I, I something that I just comes up on my channel like a lot because I just really like to talk about it. And um, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people who try to do things because they're cheaper and stuff like that but I feel like find a deck that you really like that's like the most like important thing that you find something that you like um and you can make it your own absolutely like you can do things you can do jank things I love stuff like that do that that's great um and a huge thing with this I think is proxying a deck um I know a lot of people complain about like oh like I don't have access to like a printer or something like that honey do you know how I make my proxies Okay, I take pieces of paper and I cut them up and then I write what the card does on them. And a lot of times if you're like proxying like Snapcaster Mage, you may want to know what that card does. Like that's a card like, you know, it's not like a weird card that's got like, like a Tarka's Command that's got like 15 modes. It really has four, but it's more than one. It's a lot. So like, you know, um, proxying cards is really good. A lot of times I just write, like, I know what the card does. Like I'm like Serum Visions. I know what Serum Visions does. Like, you know, things like that. So um, I think that's a really important thing is building a deck that's got its foot in the door in modern. And we're going to talk about a similar idea to that actually towards the end of this list. But yeah, proxying is awesome. It really gets you to know um, if you're gonna build a deck, if you're interested in it, if you like it. Because the worst thing ever is really just kind of like building a deck and then finding that you don't like it. Like I said, we're gonna go back to this idea and I, I don't want to talk about it right now. I want to wait till the end. But yeah. Okay, that's that. And then the second thing I would say is everyone starts somewhere. You are not gonna be like perfect and great and amazing like as soon as you start. Like you have to have a lot of practice. And this is like my thing that I really need to take this advice because I really need patience and I really need to know that like, I'm not always just gonna do well in magic. People who are great at this game are not always going to do well in magic. Find people who are supportive. So find people who are like, you know, they share their common interests of liking magic. So just like talk to people who are just gonna like support you and like raise you up and not bring you down because that's just negative energy and no one wants that around. Um, so that to me is like a really important thing if you're in like a social situation where people are being like really like negative towards you or not understanding that like you're like new at this like new at this whole competitive scene like guys i played magic for like three and a half years before i got into competitive magic so like it, it doesn't have anything to do with like you not knowing how to play magic you're just playing an entirely different format you're you're going from playing where things like, and this is my next point, is missing triggers and things like that. Those things don't matter in, as much in, in casual magic, but they do in competitive. This is a really important point that um, it's kind of just something that you just kind of, kind of, you just kind of have to be good at, is you kind of just have to be good about not missing your triggers. Let's be real here, guys. I've done it. Um, the amount of times I've 
I haven't missed a lot of my pack triggers when I played that deck. I don't think I've missed a lot of those. That was like the one thing I think that I was like really bad at. But pretty good at everything so far. Use dice. Whatever you can do so that you like can remember your triggers, like whatever you want to use, just make sure you remember them because they're like really important. Um, that I think is like really another really important thing is like people aren't going to be like, hey, by the way, man, you missed your trigger. Like it's a competitive scene and it's not them being like mean, like not telling you. It's just like, hey, like you need to pay attention. You need to like be good at these things basically. So that is really important. Um, yeah, with that, like, if you're playing with Slaughter Pact, because this is important because a lot of people are running that with Kalidus right now because Jund is, like, fine everywhere, um, that's a really, really important trigger that a lot of people miss those things, and you just l straight up lose. You just, there's just no, you, you just lose. So, yeah, make sure you remember those things. Don't try to play it off. Don't try to be cool. Don't try to be like, yeah, huh, I can remember this off the top of my head, haha, <laughs> even though my hands are shaking, I'm really nervous. No, just put a dice on your deck. Like, remember your triggers. Just do it, okay? I hope my voice comes into your head when you're just like, oh man, I played Slaughter Pack. Should I put a dice? Yes, you should put a dice on the top of your deck, okay? Okay, great. Glad we talk. Okay, next point. You're going to be playing with people who want to win. They just want to win. You know, even with sometimes when you're playing casual magic, like casual 60 card or like casual EDH or whatever, like, you know, like people, they just, they just want to win and they want to do well. And there's some people who actually don't even care about magic, but they play to win. Um, they just do it because they like winning and they do it because they just like that satisfaction. And there's some people who just get really, really salty when they don't win. And there's some people, especially people who get very salty at new players. Um, I've had this a lot of times, like, when I've gone to events. I don't know if it's because I'm a girl or because, like, I'm seemingly a newer player. Like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a combination of both. But people just get really, like, salty when you beat them. And, like, it's, it's just, like, you think, like, you've done something wrong. And they, they, like, make it seem like you're of a lesser value because, like, oh, like, you totally got lucky to win. Like, people will do that a lot. Or, like, if you hadn't drawn this card, I would have won. Or, like, things like that. Can I just, like, avoid that negativity? Like, there's people who are just going to be, like, salt cakes out there and, like, just let them be salt cakes. I get salty. Everyone gets salty. Like, you know, it's, it's difficult not to when you invest a lot in this game. So, like, if people are just being, like, rude to you, just, like, ignore them. Like, just, they just, whatever. They're just, they're intent on that one thing. And, you know, for some people, like, I'm at that stage of, like, if I just, like, top eight something, that's super awesome. And some people are, like, I don't care about top eight. I care about first place. Like, that's their whole thing. So they just want to be the best. And that's fine. Just let people do that. You know, some people are just going to be, like, just, again, bag of pretzels. Just, just, you know that. Okay, and this is the last point. This is the point that connects to my first point that I talked about. I don't know why I didn't talk about them together, but I didn't want to mess up the order of my list. I don't know. Um, what on earth does my... Okay, that's what my handwriting says. I just sometimes I write things and I'm like, what? Um, this is something that it took me a very long time to understand this concept about decks not being good in the meta at certain points and matchups. Um, this is a thing that I don't want to say it's like the more like experience you have. I mean, I think that's really what it kind of is, but like, it's kind of one of those things that like, I remembered like when I was playing Grixis Control, this was before, um, Grixis Control is really good right now, but like, this was before like Goblin Dark Dwellers and Ancestral Visions, like that whole thing. This was before that. I remember playing that deck and like, I, I remember I was at like a card store and like someone just said to me, they were like, you know, like Grixis Control is like a really good deck, but it's not good right now. And I like, I will never forget that. And like, I just, that's something that I will always remember as something. That there are some decks that are super good. Guys, look at Burn. Burn's a great deck. It's not good in the meta right now. So like, that's something that I think that a lot of newer players, and again, it took me like, I, I started playing competitive magic last like July, and it took me until like February to like understand that concept. Not like I was like playing competitive magic like every weekends, but like, it's something that like someone really just needed to explain to me to be like, hey, listen, your deck's not good right now. It doesn't mean that it won't ever, it won't ever be. It just means right now, the matchups thing is like, there's some matchups that like, you know what, it's, it's like, I know a lot of people, 
And I, I'm one of those people who really wishes that every game of Magic that I played wasn't dependent on match matchups. It was dependent on skill level along with, um, what was I going to say? There's another thing. On skill, level, oh yeah, skill level and like fair magic. Like a lot of people say things like Abzan and Jund are like fair magic. They're just, they're good decks, but they don't do degenerate combos. They're just good. They're just sweet. Like they're just like value like toolbox decks. Those decks are just really awesome. Um, and like that I wish could be more of the meta. And I don't mean like that everyone should be playing Abzan and Jund. I mean like I wish the decks in the format, like, when I sat down, I wish that, like, I, I could actually have a fair chance where it's not like, wow, I'm just gonna lose this matchup. And that, to be honest, is, like, the really, un like, one of the unfortunate things is, like, you know, say you're playing a deck that you love, but it's not good in the meta right now, or, like, you just, your local game store, everyone plays those decks that are just really bad against you. Th that's the reality, like, that just, like, happens. Um, and I think that that's a major issue that connects back to how I think, in my opinion, there's no best deck in modern, because I think it's all kind of like a circle. Like, I think that's a good way of putting it. It's kind of like, well, this deck has a great matchup against this deck, but these decks beat it. And like, that's kind of like how I think it works. It's like, you win some, you lose some kind of thing. And again, I think those two things connect how some things just aren't really good in the meta where like that one deck that you play is just bad against because the meta's doing this and you're doing this and like you can't beat that because this just beats you but this is so much of what other people are playing so um I think like um talking about like you know if you build a deck for example and you are like whoa, like, no, this deck doesn't win or, like, whatever, and you have frustration with it because goodness knows I have done that several times. I've switched a lot of decks because I've just been super unhappy with them. And I feel like, for me, I feel like I really, like... And um, this is something I'm really trying to work on, is I'm trying not to be like, well, my matchup was bad. I'm trying to like look at myself more and like my skill and like my abilities, and, like how decent I am at this game. Like I'm not, I'm trying to look at that instead of like those other like, anyone can have a bad matchup. That doesn't matter who you are. You can be the best matchup player in the world and still have a bad matchup, it just happens. So I think this connects back to a lot of how some people just have like, the cards and they can borrow decks and they can like do whatever and like I know for me like my local game store is like you know I know that if I needed to I could just borrow a deck from someone like and that's the type of like relationship that I have with like a good amount of players there that it could be just be like hey man I need I need or I need this card hey can you let me borrow it like I'm I am guarantee that not all communities are like that which is really unfortunate um but I kind of also understand because I understand you need to have like an established relationship with people before they just let you like go run away with cards because I, I just completely get that um so I think a lot of it goes back to like income and like if you have the funds to be able to afford any deck in the format and you can just build anything that you want to that's super cool cool but uh, like the reality is people who start on competitive magic and they're like 14 15 years old they don't have like a ton of money to just be throwing around it makes it a little bit difficult which is why there's like a lot of stuff to say about how um the price of cards work and it's it's a really frustrating thing that it's decks start at like $500 for a lot of people and that's really unfortunate they're like sort of like $500 if you don't want to play burn um, and let's be real here, not everyone wants to start off playing Burn. I didn't start off playing Burn in the format, but a lot of people do because it's one of the most stupid decks. I actually did a video talking about Burn, actually, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, those were, like, my tips on, like, how to, like, tr like, so a couple of things, like, on how to, like, transition into, like, getting into competitive magic because, you know what, like, I feel like really the main thing was just having, like, a really comforting, like, environment, like, people who, like, were there for me and people who were, like, yeah, okay, cool, you're starting out in Magic, let's, like, support you and stuff. Because I, like, wrecked the first tournament that I was in, and it was, I savaged it, and I top eighted, and it was sweet. If you guys remember that, like, if you've been following me for that long, like, that was nuts. That was super sweet. For those who don't know, the first tournament that I ever went into, first competitive Magic tournament, I was so nervous, I was, like, shaking, I couldn't eat anything, I was like, ah, I'm so nervous. And then I crushed it, and I got into the top eight, and it was awesome. It was, like, the most surreal day of my life, and I still think about it, and it was, like, super sweet. Um... But yeah, so those are some things that I have to say um, about kind of like how I kind of like eased into like competitive magic and how I like, but really the main thing was just the support system. It's just find people who are going to support you. Justin and I actually, and Paul kind of sort of, um, we actually got into competitive magic together. 
that was awesome like we kind of co like collectively decided as friends we were like we want to do this like this is something that's cool to us so if you can like find like your friends and you guys are like hey like I think I kind of want to try it like go for it like go for it like try and like see you know like what it's like or whatever and hey you know what if you don't like it you don't like it and if you just take a break like I am hey all means you know like do whatever you want play the kind of magic that makes you happy and play with the people in magic that you like if you can I know it sounds like a really like difficult thing to do but if you have the options play with people that you like because that's just there's so much negativity in the community and it's just, just yeah all right guys uh thanks for tuning in I'll talk to you guys later bye